Hello, crafty people. I thought I would just do a hopefully short video on how to make this in um, Photoshop. This is one, two, three, four. Well, actually, that little butterfly there is five images in that. And I can show you the mistakes I made when I was trying to figure out um, Photoshop on my own. So, let's start out by making a new, well, there we go. And I just made this eight and a half by 11. You can do it uh, portrait like that. You can do landscape like this, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna hit um, portrait and create. And there we have our workspace. Now what I was doing that was wrong was I thought, well, I can put my next image here and work on it. But if you do that, I'll do like I used to do it. Open and say I want this picture right here. It opens it in a new space. So I can't, I couldn't figure out how do I get that onto that. That's where I was lost and I just stopped there. So after watching hours of videos and trying repeatedly it turns out, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so you can see my my folder here. Maybe, there we go. Um, let me go with this tutorial right here. What you have to do is open this separately, get your image, and I'm gonna use this old paper image here, and scoot it over like that, and then it's right on top. And then, of course, you can Stretch it out however you like. Move it around. Okay, so if you hear that noise, it's my dog chewing on a bone. Uh, so then whenever you're done, every layer, I'm gonna make this big again so you can see it. Every layer, then you go, let's see if I can put it up there. Up here, there's a little check mark and you click that like I'm done with that layer. Let's see if I can get the phone to go up a little bit more. No, of course not. That would be too easy, right? Hang on a second. Okay, well, it's not beautiful, but at least you can see the top here where you can see kind of what I'm doing, hopefully. Okay, so we have our first, our background, and you can see over here, it says antique, French, whatever. And then here's our background, which is really like our workspace. So this is our first image here. So next, I'm going to open up my next layer. I'm going to go back to my things here, and I think I will do this butterfly. So again, I'm going to drag it over here. And then if you go up here in this corner, you can spin stuff back and forth. So I'm going to kind of make it at an angle. I'm going to move it over here. And I think I'm going to make it bigger. Not that big. Uh, sure, like that. Okay, so I'm happy with where that is, so I'm gonna check that off. Then, this is the one that we just did. And you can kind of see the background is like rasterized, has all those little checkers in there. So what we wanna do is put a mask under that so we can work on that without affecting this background piece. So down here is this little, I don't know what that is, looks like a Japanese flag, I don't know, but it adds a mask to it. And whenever you're working on to get rid of this white around here, you wanna be sure you're working on the mask. You don't wanna work over here. Of course, I would do that. Okay, bye bye. You don't wanna be working over here. You don't wanna be working over here. You have to be on the mask whenever you, see this would just take me to that. So I wanna be sure this is has the white lines around it. So then you can go over here and get, I have a paintbrush up right there. And I have it at opacity 100%, normal. I have it as just a circle and you can, here's the size for your circle and you can decide what size you wanna do or if you want. Sometimes I've seen people use like a spray paint looking brush, it's kind of a spatter thing. But I've, I've been happy with this, it's just a general circle right there. So, then what we're gonna do is just start to erase this. It's gonna take a little time, because you gotta make sure that you have all these straight edges disappear. 
and I kind of didn't like that it was this black, so I went over mine. I'll go back to mine. You can see I went over quite a bit to kind of fade it out, make it look like it was old. But this is the, sort of the same thing that I used on that one. So you can kind of see that we're starting to lose the edges. Kind of erasing, erasing, erasing. So let's just say, okay, I went over this. I'll get rid of that. And then you'll just continue on and do the whole thing like that. So you don't have to say, okay, I'm done with that. You're just, you just manipulate it and that's it. So I'm going to go back to my images and I think I will put these roses on it next. And I don't care about these words down here. I don't care if I lose them or not. But I'll make this really big. And it's okay if it goes off the page. This will crop it down to the size that you want. So I think I'll put that. See, where's my edge? I think I'll put that like there. Okay, so again, I have to tell the thing I'm done. Playing with that one. And I want to go and put a mask on this make another layer so I'm going down here to my add a mask add a layer and that's where I want to work I don't want to work on this one because that's that if I wanted to go back and work on it I could go to this and still do still continue with that but I want to go and work on this one with the roses so I'm going to do the same thing have my brush have 100% opacity my size everything's the same and then I can start to do this and I can I can even erase all these words if I don't want them you might leave them on there it's really up to you um, and I really lightened up these roses I'll show you on mine because I wanted you to be able to see them but I didn't want them to be so bright that that's all you saw was that so same thing here just kind of erasing my layer Kind of lightening these up and it, it takes a while. I noticed that if you if you make your layer like this, it gives a kind of a neat old old worn paper look. Now you don't have to, you can do circles, but I just kind of like the way this was just kind of shabby looking, I guess. I don't know. So you can do those as light as you like. And so then again, I don't have to tell it that I'm done. I'm just you know, working on the layer, so we're good. I'm gonna go back to my files here, and I think I'll put this feather on here. It'll be a little different than the one that I did. And I think I'll make it, let's see. I'll make it down there. I think I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and so I'm done manipulating that, so I'm gonna check it off. Then I need to make a mask. I'm gonna go down here to this little, what does it say anyway? It doesn't say anything. Oh, wrong one. Okay, so I put it on the wrong thing. So all I have to do is grab it and take it down to the garbage. Delete it, yep, because I want to put it on the one that I just added. Okay, so we should be good to go here. I'm working on that mask. And I can kind of see my little feather right there in that picture. You can see up here, this is just a navigator. And if you want to do, okay, you can go away. If you want to do some things that are really close, you can use this little doodad here. And you can make it bigger and smaller so you can see, oh, uh, you know, I don't like that pixels like that or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to erase this one. I'm working on that white beside the mask, which has disappeared. And you can even move the layers if you grab, I don't know where my layers went. If you, where are 
want to see where it went. I don't know. Um, but if you grab the each layer and pull it up or down, you can move it. You can, like if I wanted this to look like it's behind the roses, I can go back in and, well, it doesn't make much sense, but, and I haven't really used it because I just kind of have everything faded out. You know, we're trying to make paper that looks like, like it's really vintage. So the same on here. And if I want it to look like it's on top of the butterfly, I don't have to do it really hard there. You know, do a lot. And you can say, see it takes a little bit of time to get all these faded away and get things to look the way you want. But it's kind of addictive and it's kind of fun. So, let me see here. Get my layers. Let me see if I can maybe move a layer. Let's see if I take the roses and I want to put them above this feather. So I'm going to grab it, see if it'll work. Move it up. Nope. Mine is persnickety. Sometimes it takes a couple times <clears throat> to get it up there, but I didn't get the, the gist of it anyway. I don't know. Play with that. It's not really... There, we got it. Now the roses are on top. So this is on top of that. So if I want to work on the roses again, all I have to do is go back into this mask, and then I can work on the roses. If I want to work on the feather, I go in this mask, and then I can work on the feather. And then the butterfly. There's our mask for that, and I can work on that. And I won't bore you with sitting here doing all of these, but it is fun. I want to show you some places where you can get some images. Now, if I'm done with this, all, all I'll do is go File, Save As, and then it'll say, do you want to save it on your computer? Do you want to save it to the cloud? And I'm just going to put this on the computer because I'm not really going to save it. And so I'll title it Tutorial. Save, and yeah, 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 okay, uh-huh, okay. So, let me show you some places where you can get some of these images. This is just through Bing, like just whatever you use, Google, Bing, whatever, and I just typed in free printable vintage scrapbook background, and this came up, and I really liked it, and that's kind of what I made mine off of was with the roses and the, the butterflies, and I like these old postage stamp thingies on these um, postcards. Uh, also, this Pixabay, right here, Pixabay, they have tons of neat stuff. Um, if you go over the picture, and here it says sunflowers, flowers, so, so I want sunflowers. Let's see what they have. All right, here's lots and lots of sunflowers. These are all photographs but you can tell it that you want vectors. So this is just images. If I do vectors and graphics, then I can get some that are more like drawings that I can put in. Uh, these are all, you can use them. You can sell them if you use them in something else. Like if you use it as part of a page, like you couldn't like take that and be like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna sell that. I'm going to say this is a card you can print out to make a bookmark or something. No, you can't do that. But you could put it in one of the pages like we just did where you have several different elements. Um, there's also Graphics Fairy. Let's see if I can go there. Um, <clears throat> this one also has a lot of free. They have some that if you do premium member, uh, you can have, um, let me see if I can find it. Here's premium. If you sign up for this, then you can get the whole, like a whole kit like this. Here's everything that's in it. But what I've been using is just this, like this is where my butterflies came from. Now the thing with uh, Pixabay is you can use up to five images in one piece and you have to change them at least 40%. So 
if I took this butterfly and put it on my paper and I faded it out like I just showed you, that's at least 40% of changing that image as it really was one of the one of these images that that I was working from. So this thing just has all kinds of good stuff. And they even give you some um, how to do things, like how to make a journal, and there's just so much neat stuff on here. You can't use any of these and like put them on the on the group and be like, here's free stuff. Here's a free image for you. You can't do that. If you make one like the like the paper with four or five things on it, well, yeah, you can say, well, here's a free thing that I made, and then that's fine. Um, some of the uh, creators, like this Karen Watson creator, if you use her images, you can thank her, and you can even thank her just, oh, it was free thanks. You can give her however much money you think you would want to give her, sort of like Patreon. So... Those are some neat places to go. Uh, just about anything you think of is available out there for your journal if you have a certain theme. Like I was gonna do one that was all sunflowers and I thought well, I probably won't be able to find sunflowers. Well, as you saw, there's a ton, come on, go, a ton of sunflowers. And to save these, well, let me just pick one. Let's just pick this one. You can do right here, free download. And then it'll ask what size. I just use whatever size it comes up. And then it tells me this is where it went. So I open that file. It usually goes, and my computer it just goes into pictures. And I'm trying to keep folders together so I know what I have. So I'm usually going up here and I'm doing the save as. And then I put it in my folder with things that I want to work on. Or rename it if you want to. So these are just some things that I have saved that were interesting and I didn't want to lose them. So, and then I get rid of that because it just junks it up. Okay. So, um, that's about all I can think of. I'm sure I probably missed something, but hopefully it'll be helpful if you're worried about, um, you don't know how to save pictures even when they're free. Uh, how, how can I make pages like that for myself? And I'm sorry, this looks like this camera slipped down again. Uh, I'll just ask me and I'll try to answer any questions. I'm not a genius at this. I just figured it out. I've had uh, Photoshop for years and I was a photographer, so I used it for a lot of my photography. And I had no idea how to use it for my art stuff. So if that helps somebody, that's awesome. All right, have a good one. Bye.